Cheers, everybody. Steve with an area in space. And upon a request, I am back. I got a lot of requests after posting uh, this image. Actually, it's been a little cropped, but uh, the subject of today versus this image is tone mapping. And this is an original image of the Cone Nebula that, that I did and looks good. I dig it. I did it a while ago. Got some pretty good colors, but you see, we really just kind of got our amber and our blue. And that's it. Uh, so let's minimize that, push it down here. This is a, a different process of really kind of getting some more color out of your image. Even though this one's cropped, we're going to redo this one in the full version. Uh, and just as full disclaimer, I did not come up with tone mapping. I actually watched a video on YouTube with Eric Coles, pretty famous astrophotographer, especially over at the Astro Imaging channel. Uh, he hosts that show and he's on that show quite a bit. Uh, but he had a method to do tone mapping, taking it out of PixInsight and going into Photoshop and using Photoshop to actually adjust some of the colors to really boost and enhance and bring out uh, a really different, unique color palette that you may like. So we're going to go through the steps to do that this evening. Uh, but first, we're going to hydrate. <laughs> That's what we're going to do. We're going to continue to hydrate. Uh, so I've done a lot of the pre-steps that I normally do. Uh, meaning I've got my HA right here, I've got O3 and S2. And just so you know, if you've got your three data sets, you really need to pull the stars, do a moderate stretch to them, pull the stars, and then continue to stretch until you like it. If you just combine these unstretched, you won't get the same results. You really need to stretch each data set independently in order for them to give uh, the best contribution to this final integrated image. And of course, removing the stars, I use a star exterminator. I know Starnet has a new version, uh, but I like star exterminator and I paid for it. So I'm using it. Uh, so here's the oxygen. And then of course your silky smooth HA. Uh, those are all non-linear and fully stretched. Uh, I've got another image over here. This is, uh, whew, man, it looks good. So this is the same HA data, but it's been, uh, had some linear noise reduction over here in the script in the easy denoise suite. So that's been run. I really haven't done any um, sharpening to that. I've just denoised it, stretched it. Now, when I pulled the stars for my hydrogen, oxygen, and sulfur. You don't see them down here. I did not save the stars. Crazy, right? However, with this hydrogen as my luminance layer, I do have the stars right here pulled out. So when I did star exterminator, I made sure that generate star image was checked. Okay. So here's my stars. Minimize them. This is my luminance. Okay. So I've got these basic four images right now. I've got hydrogen, oxygen, sulfur, and I've got my hydrogen again as a luminance with linear noise reduction and the stars pulled out. Cool. So what we're going to do is come over here to Photoshop and I already have a, a folder that I save these in so I can just go right into and open them up. Hey lady. Watch out for the orcas. Okay, so we're going to navigate over here to the Cone Nebula in my Tone Mapping folder. Okay. <coughs> so I've got my HA. I'm going to select my O3 and my S2. Uh, and then there's the luminance and then there's the stars. Okay. Uh, but right now I'm just going to open up these three, three, three files. Click open. Wait, Ooh. take a sip. Yeah, man. All right, so we've got 
not the best looking images, especially with the O3 and S2, uh, just because they have very weak signals. So they're going to look kind of grainy. Our HA obviously looks a lot better. We're not going to do anything to these images. Uh, what we're going to do is create a master image and we're going to start here with our S2. Uh, we're going to say control A, control C to copy and control N as in a Nancy to create a new image. Yes. And we can rename this um, SHO and hit create. And then we're going to hit control V to paste. And I want to come up here to image mode. I'm going to change that from grayscale to RGB. And yes, flatten. So now if you go here to the channels, you're going to see that my sulfur data is in every channel. Looks gray, right? So let's do the Hubble palette. <laughs> I remember I spelled it wrong in my last video. Good grief. Anyway, so let's grab our uh, oxygen. Control A that selects all, Control C to copy. We're gonna come back over here to this new integrated image, go into the channels and we're gonna to go to the blue. That's where the O3 goes and then Control V will paste it. And you can see right here, we're already starting to get a color image. So let's go over here to our lovely HA, Control A, Control C, go to the new image, go to the green. That's where you would put your HA data. Control V, paste it, and let's select RGB. Boom. Uh, if you did not have these pre-stretched, you would see thunder. You wouldn't see thunder. Uh, you'd see a lot of green, and it would be extremely difficult to work with. So in this case, we've got real strong uh, sulfur and oxygen adding a contribution so you can already start to see the color differentials popping up okay so we don't need these images anymore now that we've created our master image so here's here's how it goes and this is extremely uh what's the word organic so we're going to create a copy and we're going to come over here to our lasso tool and I've got a feather of 250 pixels. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw a very organic line around the highest signal areas of this thing. So I've selected that. I'm going to hit uh, over here to select and I'm going to say inverse. Okay. And then control H to hide that selection. It's still there, but I've hit it. And what I've done is I've selected the outer regions of this image with that selection. Okay. Uh, this little crazy king's hat looking thing, king's crown, king's hat. <laughs> uh, you're going to cl click it and it's going to show you. It probably is going to come in looking like this RGB. You want to drop down here and select colors. And you can see that our histogram peaks aren't really lined up. When they're lined up, they're going to be gray. So let's come in here to image adjustment and levels. Choose red. So we can clip out a lot of that data that is not being used and then push our red back over right about here. We're going to do the same to the green. We're going to clip some of the data back, center it up over the red. And all we're doing is aligning the histograms. So you can see our blue is pushed way back. We're just going to bring that blue forward right about there. And you can adjust it a little bit to your liking, but I'm gonna leave it there. So let's do preview. You can see the difference. And all we're doing is just aligning these histograms. So let's click OK to that. Let's uh, create another copy. And we hit, if we hit Control H, we see that our selection is inverted. So let's come over here to select and hit invert back again. And so now we're gonna work on this brighter signal area. So control H will hide that selection and you can see histograms not lined up. So let's go over here to image adjustment levels and we're going to go to our red and get rid of that data there. And then let's pull our red back over. Same with the green. And 
And obviously the green is wider because why we put the highest signal in the green channel. And really bringing this blue over and aligning it gives you that look. You're going to see a little bit more magenta in your image. Uh, but you can always tone that down to your liking. You can go back and select that and kind of turn it down. But you see what we've done is we, we've taken this from this very green Hulk green Hulk smash uh, image here to uh, something that's got a little more color depth, a lot more color depth. So let's click OK to that. And let's make another copy. And the reason I'm making these copies is just to show you the progressive difference. Uh, so let's come in here to select, deselect. So now what we can do is really zoom in on the cone nebula and really just attack very specific areas. And this is where it gets fun. So that's the area we're going to do. Control H. And we're going to come over here to image adjustment levels and just keep going through this iterative process of kind of picking off the back side of that red and then bringing it back over. Same with the green. And then, you know, the blue is pretty narrow. So we can pick it off here and then really try to widen that blue. And you can see the color differential. So that's before and that's after. And click OK. And one other thing I forgot to do uh, that really does help that I should have done right off the bat. Oh, I can still do it. I can come over here to edit. What I want to do is I want to assign a color profile. And it says changing the document profile can affect the appearance of the layers. Do you want to continue? Okay. Yes. And I'm going to assign this Adobe RGB 1998. And that pretty much says that everybody that viewing this is going to have pretty much see the same color profile. So you can see it. And what it did is it just, it's almost added a ton of saturation. But because we're going to add our luminance layer on top of this, we're going to kind of mute a lot of that, that saturation. So, so this is uh, our last image that we did. So let's come in here to select, deselect. And let's come back in here to our lasso tool. Let's grab another, create another copy here. Uh, you know, you see that little star halo up there? You know, that's bugging me, right? You know that uh, spot healing brush tool was calling to me. Steve, just one little click. That's all it'll take. Uh, Control H. Maybe I'll ask you to look away. Okay, same thing. Show our histogram. See, now we're starting to get things kind of lined up here. But we can always do a little bit more adjusting. We can actually... Push that red right there. Same thing with the green. I want to get it ahead of the red. And the blue. We can really widen the blue. So before, after. Okay. And now it's just a matter of how much do you want to do? How much do you want to do to this? How far do you want to take this? How much do you want to manipulate this image? And that's up to you. Because we're, we are tone mapping or color mapping this image. It's not a true color. So it's really just what fits our eye. So we've got some green in here. Right like that. So we can grab that one little area. And it's just a matter of just working on these areas. And you see the histogram peaks always going to look different. Control H to hide that. So same process. I know you're like, okay, whatever. So we can really push that red forward and really just bring up the whole brightness value of some of these areas that are a little darker. And we can actually come in here and just click RGB and just bring that, just brighten that area up just a little bit. See that? So 
so we have that kind of ugly kind of green and really we we still have some green which i like uh, but now we've getting more blue and magenta and yellows and golds and and uh a really cool color palette it may not be for everybody but it's definitely something that uh, i like on some images some images you do this and you go no it looks like garbage and you go on to something else it doesn't really lend itself to every data set um but for this one i found that it did so that's why i'm using it for the video wait getting parched Dark on okay can't do it anymore i swear I don't know what's wrong with me. That one little, boop, that one little, oh wait, I have to do this. Deselect. Were you watching? Are you watching this? It's like blasphemy. All right, so let's, let's grab one more just in case you hadn't got it. Let's grab this whole little, include the cone. Let's grab this whole little area right in here. Make another copy, control H. Uh, come over here to image adjustment levels let's show our levels and same thing bring that red a little more forward and there's nothing that says you can't bring the whole thing up to brighten it too I see look at that our blue is super thin all right so we can click OK to that and watch we can come back in here to the levels come back to blue and keep working that blue like you would do a total histogram package just keep stretching it until it's as wide as the red and green all right you feeling it so let's come back over here again levels see our blue is getting wider so it's contributing more okay see the difference all right okay so cool so let's watch this let's uh turn them all off all right so this is where we started Hulk smash and then slowly but surely it looks good but don't call me Shirley uh, we have changed the color look at that All right okay so let's come over here let's just call that done let's go uh, layer Latin All right um, let's create a copy yeah let's create a copy we're going to come in here to filter, camera off filter. And we're going to say noise reduction and color noise reduction. Remember, we have luminance going over this, so it's going to be super smooth. All right. So let's see how we did there. We smoothed it out. <clears throat> the other thing we can do is come in here to filter, noise, dust and scratches, and really just kind of smooth it out. And you want to know why we weren't smoothing at all? Because we still had a selection done there. So let's go back in here to our camera roll filter and say yes, we're going to go backwards in time deselect so control H no selection now let's come back in your camera I'll filter Good gravy I swear I'm on more I might I am my own worst enemy so let's boost that noise reduction smooth it out it gets rid of a lot of that chrominance noise so now we come in here you see smooth Remember, we're putting the luminance over, so it's fine if it's blurry. Okay, so let's go back in here and grab our luminance and our stars. Let's say File, Open. We're going to say Loom, Control, Stars. Let's 
So our luminance is a little bright. Um, let's go over here to filter, camera off filter. And a great way to kind of bring down some of the brightness if you bring in a black and white image is to go in here and just dehaze it. And then let's add some clarity. I love it. Okay. <clears throat> control A, Control C. We're going to go here to our SHO. Let's make a copy just for the heck of it. Control V to paste it on top. And we're going to change the blending mode to luminosity. Ooh, doggy. All right. So let's drop the opacity down just a scotch, about 95%. Let's go in here to image adjustment. Curves. We're going to create a little less curve in here. About there. And you see all of that heavy um, saturation that we had before really got muted out when we put that luminance on it. That's all right. We're going to get that back. Uh, so you see luminance added. Uh, so let's go in here and say uh, layer flatten. All right, let's create a copy. We're going here to filter, camera raw filter. I love the camera raw filter in Photoshop. I love it. We're in our basic tab, so let's boost our vibrance and dehaze it just a little bit. Boost our clarity, boost the saturation a little bit. Damn. Can I say damn on YouTube? I can say a lot worse than that if I wanted to. <laughs> uh, okay, merge down. Let's create another copy. So let's go here to our stars. Control A, Control C. Selects the stars as they are. <laughs> Come here to SHO and Control V to paste. We're going to change the uh, blending mode from normal to screen. Now you see, I put in white stars and you're like, wait a minute, he put in white stars, but you know, they actually pick up some of the color. And like I said, since we're doing uh, an SHO image, you know, we're not super worried about star color. And that was one of the things that Eric mentioned in his video of something that I struggled with was putting RGB stars, excuse me, on an SHO image. It's hard. And to me, this looks just as good. Um, so with the layer one selected, blending modes and screen, I'm gonna go here to filter, uh, noise, dust and scratches. And I'm gonna kinda mute out some of the fainter stars. Let's drop that down. So you see how they're really bright when you move it and then you let go, they kinda dim out. See like that? When you move it around, that's what they are. And then that's what dust and scratches does. So it really just kind of mutes some of those really fainter background stars. You still have some pretty good brightness in your foreground stars. Uh, so let's keep that. Cool. So that really shows the uh, nebulosity better. Let's go to that bottom image down here. We're going to image adjustment curves. And we're going to do another S curve because we screened over top of that. Ooh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Come on now. All right. Let's merge that down. Yeah. What do you think? You like it? <coughs> uh, let's just do one more cool little trick here. Let's go back into our stars. Let's go to image adjustment levels and we're going to increase the brightness of the stars just a little bit see that Boop. right there look okay control a control c to copy go back over here to sho control v to paste now we're going to take this bottom copy here we're going to push it up so that it's on top of that brighter star layer that we just created 
going to take that brighter star layer and we're going to change its blending mode to screen. And then we're going to select the top copy. And we're going to grab our erase tool. We want to make sure that opacity and flow is at 100%. And then we just turn back star, turn these stars back on. Okay. Cool. So now these bigger stars are more in the foreground, giving us what's the word, ladies and gentlemen? Depth. Depth is a word. right all right now i'm going to do something super crazy back in pixinsight to finish this image up that i've been working on it takes a little while but bear with me it really makes a difference so here's our image i dig it you dig it so let's go here and layer flatten okay and we're going to go here and file save as make sure it's saved as a tiff we're going to say sho-2 just to make sure because i had an sho here and we're going to click save and you can see we've got some great color in here but it's not like over the top like was that loud smack you in the face color oh crap sorry i'm recording uh, okay let's go back in here to pix insight file open and our tone mapping folder, and we're gonna click this SHO2. Cool. And we're gonna do something super crazy after all that work, we're gonna pull the stars out. Yep. Okie dokie. <clears throat> all right, so let's minimize those uh, stars from this image. Here's our starless image again. I was like we were just starless man we put the stars back like why did you take them out that's what i want to do uh, i think i had a range mask set here already man i've done a lot of this stuff already and, and basically what this range mask did is it um grabbed the higher brighter values of the image for sharpening so we're gonna run two passes of sharpening to really make this image pop uh, so we've applied our image we're gonna go in here to mask show mask by right clicking on the image and what we're going to do is we're going to put a heavy dose of sharpening to really pop this area in here let's uh grab our little box here with nothing on it let's just grab a preview box we're not going to grab it we're going to create it create a preview box and we're going to use a multi-scale linear transform for sharpening Right now it is set for noise reduction. We're gonna reset the tool. Nothing down here is checked except for detail layer. We're gonna get a layer two and we're gonna change that to a 0.075. Or, well, yeah, layer three. We're gonna do this one heavy. We're gonna do this on a 0.4, okay? And layer four. We're going to say 0 0.05 and this layer right here at 0.4 is really going to do our some mega sharpening here but i really like what uh, mlt does for sharpening let's drag and drop the reason i pulled the stars out is i i really want to sharpen the nebulosity without over sharpening the stars so control shift let me look around my microphone i'm not like an idiot going I don't know what keys anyway I'm having the, my microphones in the way get over it uh, okay so control alt and Z look at that it's like glasses off glasses on glasses off glasses on I can't see better okay groovy so let's apply it to the whole image super sharp i don't even know if you can see it in youtube land out there but we go back one step you see how much it just sharpens that principal nebula there okay so let's minimize the tool and let's put our stars back in so we're going to come up here to uh 
Pixel Math. Where's Pixel Math? Pixel Math. Oh, he's hiding. He's got stage fright. Pixel Math. Pixel Math. There we go. Oh, sorry. Use single RGBK expression. Checked. So we're going to say, um, oh, not going to do that. I mean, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's right click on the image, say mask, and we got to remove the mask because we're putting the stars back in. We can go ahead and kill that uh, preview too. So let's click into the expression editor here. Um, we are at SHO2. So we got to select it. Plus SHO2 stars. That's pretty easy, right? Click OK. Do the destination. Make sure it is set to replace. Drag and drop. Stars back in. OK. Let's push that down here. Let's go here to our uh, little icon here that's going to say something when we click on it. I guess it's not. Anyway, it should say extract CIE lab component, but it just won't do it. Basically, what that's going to do is create a luminance, including the stars, right? So, a luminance mask. We're going to drag and drop it in the middle of nowhere here. Minimize our little mask. Okay. Open up MLT, and we're going to come to this higher value here, and we're going to change this to 0.05. So we are going to apply a little bit more sharpening to our nebulosity, but not enough to really ever do it. But we are going to hit these stars now because we've included them in the mask. So drag and drop. Cool. And I'm sure you're like, I can't tell. I'm driving down the road. But trust me, we've tighten the stars up a little bit okay so mask remove the mask and if you get done with this process and you're like man you know it could uh could be a little smoother in the background i may have just a little too much sharpening you can either use process um noise reduction tgv denoise which is pretty fast or you can say file save and wait and wait and wait oh, and save and go over here to uh, Photoshop and we can close that image because we have a new version of it uh, no we don't want to save that and let's close down our luminance open um, SHO2. Create a copy. Come in here to filter, camera raw filter. Go to our detail tab. Apply a good dose of noise reduction and color noise reduction. Smooth everything out. All right. Look okay to that. But well, we don't want to get rid of those crispy details that we put in there. So let's add a layer mask. Eh. Add a layer mask. Click on the crispy image. Uh, dang it, microphone. Control A, Control C. Point at the white mask here. Hold the Alt key down and click into it. Control V to paste. Control I to invert that selection. Image adjustment levels. And what is black will not get any noise reduction, and what is white will. So just keep bringing these white and black points together until you're happy. Right about there. Stars are all still picked up. Click OK to that. Right click, merge down. Done. Done image. Okay, so, you know, I can't say that this is something that uh, 
went, man, this is going to be a game changer for you. And I hope you find it useful. And I hope you use this on every image that you ever do. It's not one of those kind of videos. This is an alternate to the same old, hold on, I finish it off. To the same old blues and yellows that you normally get from SHO images. And Eric, if you're watching this video, kudos, awesome process. Uh, and um, yeah, I hope to uh, I hope to hear back from you guys. Leave some comments. So let me know how your images turned out. If you did a particular data set and you're like, man, it totally blew me away. And let me know. I want to hear that stuff. So and also probably should do something really fancy. But I'm just not feeling fancy today. But I am very appreciative of the over 4,000 subscribers that I have now. Holy crap, Batman. That's that's crazy. I'm still blown away. So until next time, clear skies and clear minds.